All right, so I'm going to start talking about Sartre's being in nothingness now. Um, you know, this is like his major work, I suppose, the one that does this sort of go-to work. Um, and so before we get into it, uh, you know, I want to remind you that he, he, this is a phenomenological re approach, and one of the things that is essential for this is this understanding of intentionality. Uh, consciousness is intentional. And remember that, like, the word intentionality makes it sound like it's, like it's overly purposive, and I don't think we should think of it that way. Like, um, uh, that would make it seem like consciousness is, like, uh, like, understands itself as something and then intends it something. Like, uh, um, hmm, I'm going to intend to see a tree over there. Oh, now that's, that's the tree I intended to see. And now I'm going to intend to look at this computer. Oh, now I'm looking at the computer. Like, that's, like, if that was happening really fast or something like that, that's not what it is. It's not like a decision made. In, intentionality, what it means is like there's, there's a deciding power that goes into the world, right? So the, the decisions are already out there in the world. Um, consciousness is always consciousness of something, right? So that it's always like this and never like this looking for a world. And so never is there empiricism either, where like there's a world and then we come along and say, oh, hey, look, right? Like I said, again, I have to, I'm underscoring this because it's so important. Right here, right now, the thing that you're doing and the thing that I'm doing is where it all matters. If this isn't existence, what is? Right? This is the measure. <clears throat> and I am in it consciously and i'm in it in a bunch of different ways maybe too but you know the, i'm here and i'm like it's not like i'm i think of something and then i say it it's it is coming out as i do it and i see it as it as it happens so there is like this 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 is what we're getting at we want to get at but while i'm doing it i have to try to figure out what is happening while i'm doing it so there's a sort of uh, reflection on existence that isn't mere reflection, but isn't isn't non-reflective, or what I don't know. We have to try to figure out the language for this. Attending to my lived experiences like this uh, is not the same as cutting off lived experience and thinking about it. So, what Sartre starts off with. And very important, we saw this also in Heidegger in a different way, um, with the uh, ready to hand versus present to hand. Sartre starts, starts off with a uh, something like a pre-reflective experience and the reflective experience. So the difference being something like the, the attentiveness, the express attentiveness to what it is I'm doing. So when I turn around and I mean like turn around like literally, literally the Greek word is metanoia, right? To to turn around, uh, to reflect. When I think on myself, you know, then my experience, what I'm living in, is in some sense the thing that is taking up my attention is what is it that I was just doing there? Why was it that I was doing that? How is it that that happened? So I am my own object. But there's also a reflection where there I can sort of see myself as I am engaging the world. So I can like not like constitute from reflection only, but see myself in the constitutions as it's happening. Now, the relationship between that sort of express reflection and the reflection that happens as I'm engaging the world is very important. And one of the things that it seems to me that Sartre does is, is, is break them apart. So sometimes he wants them to be as close as our own breath. I think that's what he really wants. But sometimes he discusses that sort of non-reflective experience as wholly separate and different from reflective experience. So, I mean, this is a problem. This is what, I mean, Merleau-Ponty spent a lot of ink on critiquing this idea, not just in Sartre, but in everybody, because it always shows up. 
even the scientists, even the, I mean, there's like a, a hidden ideology in, in all of these perspectives, unless we are looking at this. If we try, if we look at this and say, well, let's look at this first. We're not looking at this. You know, let's look at how this is before we get there, but we want to get here. And consciousness and, and this are completely different, meaning they'll never be like this. So if on the one hand, there's a difference between reflective and pre-reflective experience that is completely separate, we will never get them together because they are completely different things. Right? But the problem with this is, is if we, if we say that they are the same thing, what that ends up being is just a collapsing into an idealism. And all there ever was was consciousness. And then we get like Hegel. Right? So it's a cautious like middle road here to walk. And to walk it is not always easy. Probably why they don't put Merleau Ponty in the existentialism reader because he's a hard read, and you read Heidegger, so um, you know this is this is what what we're heading for in in Sartre. So let's take a look at how he goes here. Um, so there's this already in the in the name pre-reflective cogito. Merleau Ponty has this too in his Phenomenology of Perception, but cogito means I think. So what is a pre-reflective thinking? Does it, I mean, is this just oxymoronic? So this is one of the things we're going to get to. I, I, I'll come back to that in a second. So this pre-reflective consciousness, um, uh, pre-reflective, uh, it, it's absorbed in being, you know, think also maybe here something like uh, the ready to hand. You know, how is it that... Think about how it is when you got up, I don't know, I'm just going to say something, maybe it fits, you, you fill in the blanks correctly, you know, for your own experience. You know, you, would you brush your teeth or something, you go get a, a cup of coffee and you, you know, you sit down and you start noodling around on your a, a pad or something like that, checking the news or something. Um, I, you go through the coffee making, not like announcing, you don't, now I will grab a filter from the cabinet and place it into the, the thing and do it, like attending to every second of your experience attending to everything that you're doing as if like, you know, like Superman announces, he's going to say, he's going to use his x-ray vision, you know, instead of just using, I'll scan the burning building with my x-ray vision. And then he does it. You know, that's not how we do. That's not how we engage a world. We just sort of go through and do things and notice things and notice when they're wrong and correct them without, you know, much ado. The coffee filter doesn't go in right, so you, you adjust it. And you put the, you know, the, the, the scoops in there and the, you spill some, you wipe it up. It's not like, you know, oh, a mistake happened. Stop the process. What's, what's going on? I have to reevaluate the whole thing. It's just a constant flow. And then there is the reflection on what happened when you were making coffee or so forth this morning. So there's two kinds of experience. One that sort of makes an object of my experience and one that is not an object, but sort of diffused into the world, into, into its engagements. Now, what are the relations of the two? This is, this is a problem. If they are completely different, then they will never be sane, right? Uh, if they are the same, then they were all just in consciousness anyway. It's all just what consciousness had put in them and nothing else. So the problem is, is how do we understand these? And I think that, that like I said, Sartre is trying to get us to this sort of concrete understanding. But listen to the way he talks about this pre-reflective being or this being in itself. Um, being in itself is this pre-reflective unformed, no structure, unthinkable, undifferentiated, undivided, a plenum. Like, so, so here's the thing. You can't even think it. If you think you're thinking it, you're wrong because then you've made it a thing. You can't think it. It says you can't. So there is no form, no structure. So how does something go, that is unformed become something formed? 
How does something that has no structure find its way into structure? How, how is something that is unthinkable even talked about? Undifferentiated. How does that, that's the night in which no cows are, are, I mean, the night in which all cows are black. That's that Hegel saying from way back when, right? That um, there's nothing that shows up. Nothing is given. And he says, so, so in other words, this in itself, this pre-reflective world seems to be nothing. But that's not, I mean, that can't be true because if it, there's nothing to be said, he's already said too much. You can't even call it a plenum. You know, if it's, un, if it's unformed and unstructured and anything, then you, you're not talking about anything because all of the words that you are saying are from this side of our experience of it. That is... So, you know, to, to, to separate it from the thing that gives meaning, which we're going to see is me, consciousness, he's made it a thing that is absolutely other than meaning. And this is going to, going to be problematic. So the being in itself, en soi, in, en français, right? Um, no French on the, on the exam. Uh, well, maybe en soi, but I won't make you say it. Um, being in itself is, you know, the, like, the world, the pre-reflective world of engage, of, of my engagements and the pre-reflective world, uh, all of it. And then there is the reflective world. And for itself, meaning, you know, I am the thing that is for me. I, like, self-awareness for itself, being for itself, is always engaged and aware a project, so he's a, he's like Heidegger here. You know, we, we got a, a situation with the future again, uh, and very important here because we're going to see this, we trace this out even further. Uh, well, being and nothingness is the title of the book, right? Uh, the the forward self brings distinctions into a world that doesn't have distinctions. Remember, so there is the the non-distinct, nondescript world of nothing. And then there is this tool of difference making, this tool of negation, uh, which will be me, which will be consciousness. And that determines reality. So, I mean, already, I mean, uh, the exam, uh, given the exam on, on SART right now, I could ask, is there a problem with this as regards intentionality like we've talked about as being this? Because it sounds to me like he says, there's this thing and it doesn't even have fingers to fit. And then there's this thing and it makes everything. It determines reality. So, you know, keep this in mind. Even what, though he's going to like come back and, well, do a sort of do -si do with this, this idea. Um, the being for itself, uh, let's see, this, what else can I say about this? Let's look at it further. Excuse me. Um, so, uh, further explaining or, or understanding this for itself, the being for itself, which is, uh, you know, consciousness, and we'll see it is nothingness. So, it's, so what is it? it it's different from the being in itself, because there that's lost in itself, right? There is no awareness of it. And the being for itself is ex is expressly aware. It is it stops up that engagement. It stops up the everyday engagement where I'm going through my things. It says, hey, what is it going on here? So it's like a step out of the everyday and that that absorbedness and being. So it's a detachment from the in itself. And again, like I was just saying, it opens up a knot. Even the question is already the, the possibility of negation. So like, huh, what's going on here? Or what is that? Is that something? Meaning, is that that thing that I'm focusing on? 
the thing that I'm, I am circumscribing by way of my question is already a circumscription in a world where there was no circumscription. It's already to foreground something and background something that was not foregrounded and backgrounded before, right? It's already to make differentiations in a world that had none. So being for itself is a very, very important and critical power. It is the thing that makes all the distinctions, right? He says it brings it brings the, the negation into the plenum. It's a cutting. I like this. Limiting and delimiting. Limiting, um, delimiting, meaning I like delimiting better the way he, I, you know, because it's it's both of limitation and from limitation, right? Um, so it's 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 not like a d disempowering because it is a it is it is from empowering or something like that it, it's an, a, an interesting idea or, or a phrase for understanding standing this but it cuts into being it carves it up it is and this is his word don't take it for l that it means but you got to remember what it means it is annihilation it is annihilation so i mean i don't know maybe it's to be sort of um Super cool saying, you know, uh, man annihilates the world or something like that. You could say that meaning something like this. Um, we make differences in it. Tree, bush, annihilation. You know, uh, flower, dirt. That's annihilation. That is not the same. Not cutting. Differentiating. Flower, other flower. That's annihilation. Right? There's not just one fullness of whatever. And again, what would the world look like? So the, the world that, that he's talking about in, the, in itself doesn't have this di distinction. So what does it look like? Shh, 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 shh. You can't say anything. Again, he's made it so, so different from the world of meaning that it's a meaningless becomes like a meaningless world. Um, so uh, again, I just wanted to underscore this as, as we go go along. So, long story short, there is really no such thing as a world that is there until we arrive on the scene. So we are the things that bring meaning. We are the meaning givers. We are the 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 being givers. Because what was the nature of meaning and being prior to reflection? Okay, so this is where he's coming at. You know, I, I think he's got a great, his great example here is, and I put up that line on the board, you know, through the semester, you know, how is that line there? And it was all to, you know, talk about the play, the dynamism of, of a other, excuse me, otherwise static mark on the board. It's a, there's things going on. It's not just a mark on the board, like, like separate from the board. There is absences and presences and things that show up even when they're not showing up. So he talks about his, you know, his friend Pierre in the cafe. You know, I'm waiting on my buddy and he's not here. And I'm looking around and his absence is all over the place. Not him, 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 not him. You know, everywhere I look, I see not him. So that like this sort of it's not like there's a a blank in being that's, you know, sort of like, I don't know, a gap, I lord what this would mean. And that's oh, that's not him. No, his not being is everywhere, right? He's present as absent. Uh, this is the foreground and background thing, right? I, you know, anyone who's had a loved one or, you know, not to equate them all, but, you know, something in a habitual life, uh, love or pet that, that has died knows that, that that absence, the presence of that absence, you know, it just, it's just, it has always been here, but it's now just not here. Um, so, 
uh, and again, maybe this, remember this, this language is the language of um, the existentialists, I suppose, uh, the anguish, forlornness, and despair, and then, uh, sorry, have you ever felt anguish, forlornness, and despair? No. So, you know, why these things, he's trying to understand the nature of the, the experience, if not describe, like, your emotional state of being right now, or something like that. So, keep these in mind. So, annihilation and destructions, only humans do it, okay? We, we are the thing that carves, we, we are the meaning givers. Uh, maybe someone would want to say uh, something like consciousness things, conscious things bring this kind of meaning. And not just humans, maybe we do that, I don't know. Like Merleau Ponty does, takes a different track, I'll talk about that in just a second. Um, so, because we, we destroy being for our own ends. Destroy, I think this again, why does he use this language? If there's no structure, then there's no de-structuring for me to do it. But what he, what he means is that it's the meanings of the world are alive and we are the things that, that determine them. The meanings of the world are not determined and we live according to it. So other things he says that aren't human merely rearrange. And I don't know, he's got to, remember, he's got to keep an absolute distinction here. There is pre-conscious and then conscious existence. And never the twain shall meet. So only for conscious existence do these things even happen. Because you have to have conscious existence to understand pre-conscious existence. Pre-conscious existence cannot understand itself. So all of all of like non self-conscious world is like excluded from from bringing meaning into the world. And so my this other guy I keep mentioning him because I think he's just got it he's got it going on in a lot of places where some people don't. Um, you know, Milliponti talks about all sorts of animals, all sorts of living things, not animals, all sorts of living things from um, hydras in, you know, water, like, like, you know, plant, animal plant thing, um, hydras, spiders, fish, squirrels, chipmunks, uh, gorillas, ch chimps, uh, dogs, cats, everything, all sorts of, it, like, engagements that demonstrate something other than like an un unaware engagement. So, and Meloponti is not going to say that they have consciousness, um, but he says stuff like this. For the Hydra, everything happens as if it understands up, right? And everything happens as if it understands uh, this, or as if it understands. So this as if um, is very important for him in, in, in thinking this. But... Meaning, meaning something more than just like a hypothetical as if, look at the way that all of these animals, in the greater and lesser extent, you know, sometimes for the, like the hydra, planting itself so that it's got a, a certain orientation is like the most you'll ever see it engage, but it does that, right? And when you mess with it, it, it keeps trying to do that. Tree keeps trying to happen as if, Everything there's a meaning like up. You know, does it doesn't have language, it doesn't have it's not like it's self-aware, but it's it's not an it's not just a dumb unfolding of like law in a world, you know? So um again, but for um Milliponti, there's a more subtle kind of engagement where for Sartre it seems to be more like a uh, an all or nothing thing here. <laughs> Continuing on this, on down this point, 